It's time for Mac Break Weekly. We're going to have some fun today. I'm going to play with a new computer. It's not a Mac. It's the new Windows Surface Studio. We'll talk about why Apple might want to think about touch for the uh, Mac. Uh, futures for the iPads, very interesting futures. And an iPhone 8. Lots of good stuff coming up, including holiday buys you might be interested in. Mac Break Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Mac Break Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 535, recorded Tuesday, November 29th, 2016. Scratching the surface. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Optical Cables by Corning. Corning's incredibly durable Thunderbolt and USB 3.0 optical cables are longer, thinner, lighter, and stronger. Go to opticalcablesbycorning.com to learn more. And by Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans. Rocket Mortgage brings the mortgage process into the 21st century with a fast, easy, and completely online process. Check out Rocket Mortgage today at quickenloans.com slash macbreak. And by Drobo, a family of safe, expandable, yet simple-to-use storage arrays. This holiday season gives someone the gift of Drobo to protect their important data forever. From now until December 31st, save 20% off select models at drobostore.com when you use the code TWIT20. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we talk about the Mac, the Apple. The, we got a lot of Mac stuff. Uh, iOS, iPad, iPhone, watch, TV. Joining us from Montreal... His, uh, he's about to fly out, come down here for our holiday show. Rene Ritchie. Hello, Rene Ritchie. I got to escape the freezing rain. I went outside this morning and everything was covered in a layer of ice. And that was just, an, that was it for me. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> That's the weirdest thing that happens in winter, as far as I'm concerned. Yes. It's, it's most destructive, too, because it brings down power lines. It yeah. stops airplanes from taking it. Just yeah, the worst. It's bad. I was bad. de-iced once. I don't want to do it again. <laughs> that blue stuff gets everywhere. Andy Anako also here. He's from the East Coast as well, from the Chicago Sun-Times. But he makes his home in New England. Great to see you. There you Andy. go. Yep. It's a celestial waste of bandwidth. CWOB.com. And yay, Alex Lindsay in the house. The Hello. Great. Always good to have you, Alex. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Jason Snell was in on Sunday, and he uh, was doing... Um, the talk show with John Gruber when John Gruber let slip that it little little mice have told him that Johnny Ive is just as involved as ever in in Apple just as connected to product design as ever um Hi. I think you know we talked a little bit about was it last week about the uh the the uh, installation he did for the hotel in London for Claridge's and I just I I've said it feels like he's on sabbatical but uh, Gruber said that recently he heard Ive has been checked out or not as directly involved with product design and instead focused on architecture projects for its campus and retail locations. Uh, but but uh, but rumors like this have been going on for a while. And yesterday Gruber in uh, at Daring Fireball posted his rebuttal where he said, uh, this is what I dislike most about podcasting. With everything I write here... At Daring Fireball, I aim for painstaking precision. Of course, welcome to the club, John Gruber. <laughs> On a podcast, that's not possible. So he says, there's been speculation about this, but the company line it just means that I can spend less time on management, more time on design. And so he's got you know more time. He can do more things. But nobody's ever said to him, Johnny Ive has checked out of day-to-day -day product design. What I've heard from people who've said, I think Johnny Ive has checked out what I have heard is from people who said, I think Johnny Ive has checked out, like, you know, me. Um, he says, this isn't the case. I, I've also heard from well-placed sources within Apple. There's nothing to this while Ive is devoting much of his time and attention to architecture re recently. Every aspect of new product remains as much under his watchful eye as ever. So, take it for what you will. <laughs> I don't. I don't see. I don't feel that that's actually the case. I think there's significant evidence in my mind when I when I look at some of the most recent Apple designs that Johnny is not fully present. But, and, well, <laughs> maybe that's I, what he likes. Maybe that's his design. Maybe I. I don't. I don't. I don't think anybody outside of Apple is capable of making that call. Yeah, we don't know. 
Yep, I'll admit that. So I have to. I did get a chance on. to talk to him very briefly at the last event. He came by. Oh, and nice. He was he was talking. With, there was a group of us, and he was. Uh, the, the thing I love about him is that the, everyone at Apple, all the executives, they actually talk in real in real life, the way they talk on stage, there's very little, unless they're masters at artifice, there's very little artifice. Right. And he was just saying that, you know, like, uh, I, I think it was Craig Federici said, you know, great product, great release. And Johnny looked very serious and said, is it, is it really? Because I never know until users get it in their hands, until we see what they do with them, it's always unfinished. They're the ones who have to ultimately make that decision. And he, talk, he spoke for about a minute about how a design is completely dependent on the usability at the end of the road. And you can thrilled never to hear that. that. Thrilled to hear yeah. that. Uh, I'm not sure that's true. Uh, I'll point to a couple of things. The, f the ports on the MacBook Pro that look like they're speakers, but in fact are not. Um, uh, I've, uh, now, after having used the touch bar for a couple of weeks, I've really come to the... I just don't use it. Uh, in fact, all it ever does is get in my way. In fact, I had to turn off the Siri button. And, yeah, and I've had to rejigger it because I keep hitting it. It's right below the backspace. Um, mm. And I don't, I, I don't... Do you find you're using it, Renee? I am because I, I had this revelation. It was sort of like the revelation I had with um, 3D Touch when I learned I could 3D Touch and then go directly to Battery Saver. Is that there's certain things that I just did that took a lot of time. Like when I um, when, when I forgot what a keyboard shortcut is and I had to let go and go to the trackpad and go up to the menu and go across and then not find it and then go to help and type it in. And most of the time that's just been there on the touch bar. And the same with Safari. I would I would have to go to a window, click on each tab to see what they are. And now I just touch the little tab button and, and swipe my finger across and I quickly see every tab and I just stop on the one that I want. So there's, there's various ways my workflow was already broken that it speeds up me unbreaking it. Uh, well, and that was sort of the revelation. Yeah, it breaks it more for me. So, for instance, now instead of the function keys to turn volume up and down, I have the volume button and I hold it and then I have the slider. It Now, it's just because of muscle memory that I have to relearn that. But I don't find, you know, it was much easier for me to go boop, 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 boop. Um, I, I do, I, I'll tell you where the, the new MacBook Pro is, is fantastic. I think Touch ID is a massive improvement. And it's more than just, you know, to log in because a lot of computers have, yeah. let's face it, t uh, fingerprint readers. But I like that I can use it for purchases for, you know, it's just like Touch ID on the iPhone. For one password, it's great. One password, uh, boxes that you would have in the past had to type your, uh, your you know, root password or administrator password so that you could install software. Now you just do the fingerprint. I do like that. So I, that part of the touch bar is a massive improvement. Um, the screen is great, as you've said many times. It's really a, it's the best screen Apple's made. Uh, right and the up. SSD is so ludicrously fast. It's very and it feels really fast uh, all around. Now, I got the top of the line one, so I can't speak for the lower end ones, the i fives. But the the one the, if you spend enough money, and God knows we did, um, <laughs> it's it's very fast. Um, the keyboard is suboptimal, but not unusable. That's the best I can say about it. Yeah, it's divisive. Uh, uh, it's a nice design. Battery life is the same, right? Are you noticing yeah. massively improved battery life? No, it's the same. I had a couple times where like, there have been some people who said it's much worse for them. And I had a couple days when it was much worse, and I tracked it down to Photos Agent and Spotlight Index. Right. Uh, and they were just busy chugging away in the background. But when they stopped, it's been totally fine for me. I've used it on the show. I used it last week on the show, and it got exactly two hours, which ain't great. No. <laughs> uh, but that's, you know, full bright. Using it, you know, I'm using it on the show. Um, so, uh, but, you know, that's about what the other one I get eight to nine hours, got. which is about an hour less than what uh, Apple promised. But again, that's they're testing at half brightness. I'm at right. full brightness, and there's a bunch of other Battery things. life is impossible to give you a number and say this is what you're going to get. It's very... Well, and it changes. Like, that little predictor bar is a huge liar. Like, it says right. I had, like I said, I had 12 hours, then I had seven hours, because it's already <laughs> dynamically changing, depending on what I'm doing. I'm not convinced yeah. it's better. Let's put it that way. It feels like it's about the same. Yeah. My camera has a really great feature that I love, which is it lets you, uh, it obviously doesn't tell you what the percentage of the battery is left, but it gives you obviously green, yellow, red indicators. Uh, but in the deep in, men, deep in the menu settings, you get to decide how conservative it's going to be. So I've got it set at maximum conservative office, conservative office so that if it's, uh, if it's giving me like a red light, that doesn't mean when it came out of the box, that would mean that you can take maybe 10 more pictures. Now I've got it set so that it will give me that red light when I got maybe 50 left. So I know that, OK, I'm going to definitely not be taking 12 shot bursts anymore because I'm low on battery. I would love it if uh, computers could do the same thing where it would, it would fudge 
kind of like my old, like my old car would. I know that when the needle is on empty, I still have about 42 <laughs> yes. miles worth of gas left. And then when I get into a rental car <laughs> and empty means empty, then I'm screwed. <laughs> so uh, it's a roughly, you know, the, to, to answer this question, Johnny, Ive, I don't, I don't, I see his fingerprints on this because he's the guy who likes to put holes where no, nothing happens. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say classic Johnny. That's classic Johnny. I have same thing on the iPhone uh, 7 where it's got yeah. the, the, the symmetry. Symmetry. It's symmetrical. And, yeah. and the iPhone 7, as many point out, isn't much change from the iPhone 6S, but it's enough and it feels different enough. And I certainly love the jet black that. There's this is this feels like a Johnny Ive kind of refinement as opposed to redesign. I guess when the iPhone 8 comes out, that's what we'll say. And that say. team is so small. I mean, that team is like a dozen or so people, and they've been working together for decades. And, you know, there's such an, a, a symbiosis among them that it would be really hard to see. Like in that documentary, I think it was 60 Minutes, where they came up and they had these ideas, and he said, it's hard to tell where one begins and one ends, except for that rust-colored yeah. orange. Bad on you for making a rust-colored dorm room <laughs> carpet orange. And then they got back to the, the business of figuring out what iPhone size to make. Yeah. And I think that, you know, he... he he is busy with the stores. The last time he made a public appearance was at the store opening uh, at uh, Union Square, and he was hugely involved with that. But also, I believe Live Photos was a huge passion of his, and he was deeply involved in that. And I think a lot of the new camera stuff he's deeply involved with. That's interesting. Um, so yeah. his mandate goes beyond hardware to software. It's, well, it's, yeah, all, he it's covers all design. All, of it, yeah. all design. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think and that, that I think the minimalism, I think his minimalism is something that we were seeing, <laughs> you know, symmetry and minimalism in the in the new MacBook Pro. Uh, as well as, um, you know, the removal of the headphone jack. I think those are the kind of things that probably come from him yeah. as far as making decisions. Well, it, it, again, like, like, like Renee said, it's, it's such a small team. And also it's not as though there's like a turnover of every couple of years, you get some firebrand who suddenly wants <laughs> to put brown trim on something. Uh, it, it means that they're, they, they're a very, very tightly knit team. They know how each other think. So if, uh, if there, even if there were evidence that Johnny Ive is not coming into the office quite as often or that his attention was being split between not just the hardware stuff but also the software stuff and also the architecture and he also has some time for outside projects, that doesn't mean that his influence isn't there. It means that his team's influence is still there. And that's always been uh, uh, the residue of, uh, of everything that Apple believes in, in terms of design. And it's very possible that uh, Johnny's working on products that are not yet released. Well, uh, it's like that thing where everyone says Steve Jobs oh, would well. never do this, and then a month later you find out that Steve Jobs was intimately involved right. in the first three months of the creation of that product. Like, right. oh, Steve Jobs would never do the book. Oh, it started. The book started eight years ago. Steve right. Jobs would never do this. Oh, that started eight years ago. Right. The yeah. Touch Bar is a ten-year-old project at Apple. Yeah. Well, they're a lot. <laughs> well, let's see that the. Yeah. Is it really? It's ten years old. That thing. Yeah. Victor Victor Webb was tweeting yeah. again. Like, yeah, Word Dream was tweeting. He said like, he started working on that. I think it was eight to ten years ago. So it was five to three years before Steve Jobs passed away. And before Touch was even really in a twinkle. When in they the were eye. doing the iPhone stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm, that's interesting. We remember seeing that multi-touch demo uh, on a screen much like this. By the way, if people are wondering, this is the Surface uh, Microsoft Surface Studio. Um, uh, using I thought that the, was the, isn't that the 30-inch iPad? Uh, it's very much, you know what, it could could be. It's very much like a 30-inch iPad. If a 30-inch iPad ran Windows 10. <laughs> well, uh, not the 30-inch 30, 30 iPad then. Uh, but, oh, wait, no, but we all saw that Carnegie before. Mellon uh, demo of multi-touch. That was the first time we'd seen multi-touch, and that was the first time I saw Pinch and Zoom and, and all the multi-touch gestures. And that it's was like about... Minority Report made real. Yeah, and that was about that, that 10 years yeah. ago. It was before the iPhone came out. So like that makes board. sense. And yet I still, having used this now a little bit, and this is a, a touchscreen computer that is really much like a tablet. Having used this now, um, I, I really see the value, at least in this form factor where it's at 20 degrees, it's like a drafting table of touch on an operating system and on a screen. It's really great. Yeah. The artist and, and loves that so much. Yeah. But but notice, though, it's not even so much the use of it as like an artist tablet. It's just a simple thing that your brain has it's now tactile. been wired up to... To scroll by flicking up and right. flicking down, to zoom in by doing that. But remember, so, I'm not reaching out. It's not arms like the fact when I do have to reach out to close, you know, the controls for non touch enabled de device uh, software are up at the top of the screen where they're least reachable. Uh, it's right. interesting. You can kind of tell Microsoft's been thinking about this because everything, including in Microsoft's Edge browser, uh, is at the bottom of the screen. Yep. And I kind of mocked ribbon? Edge because Internet when Explorer I, I, used to have stuff up at the top and Edge had stuff at the bottom. Can you and use now the I ribbon interface, why. Leo, from there? When I, uh, they don't have a ribbon here. Or I guess oh, they I'm do. Sorry, on the program you were on before, could you, could you tap all that stuff? 
Oh yeah, but the uh, and okay. uh, you mean uh, that was Chrome I was using before. So um, yeah, but you have to reach for it. But it's easy okay. because it's this is a 28 inch screen. So um, and I can even change the DPI if I want. So it's easy enough for the yeah. yeah, it's easy enough to hit the touch targets. They're but, not. but but also keep in mind that uh, Microsoft is not saying that this is going to be you're only going to be using this with touch. You've no, got a keyboard, fact, you've got a mouse, you got yeah. you've got more you've got more tactile interfaces there than on any other uh, machine that you can possibly buy. Which is a um, little against the Apple way. Remember the the Apple way was one way to do everything so you don't get confused, but Microsoft well, always was also, every think, way possible, right? And if you and if you look at the markup stuff that you were showing, I think we were talking about a little earlier. Yeah, I could show um, this. I mean, so this I, is. Oops, I do that the wrong way every time. I've got a program to double touch, turns it into. Uh, now, by the way, this is not no longer scrollable or editable. It's not a live um, a browser, but I can I can annotate it, right? If that MacBook wants to cut off the other MacBook and stop it from scoring, boy. <laughs> well, and, and again, I think that, that we want to we want to think about that not not from an artist's perspective, but from a teacher's perspective, right. from a, a CEO's perspective, right. from a an ad writer's perspective of. All these folks that, that want to be able to, you know, um, circle stuff and say, no, take this out or this this right. is spelled wrong or whatever. And creating that, I think, is is what uh, is missing from for, for Apple. Particularly when you when you when you hook this up to, to speech controls, when you basically can say as you're talking, you take this and move it down to here or take, t turn this text mm -hmm. boldface. As you're without having to say, take paragraph three of document right. window one. Right. right. Yeah. I do think that uh, one of the things Apple and Johnny are probably working on um, is augmented reality. And I have to let me see if I can find uh, this. This is from oddly enough from Windows. I think everybody's working on that. Yeah, yeah. but uh, but <laughs> but uh, we've mentioned this before that it really seems pretty clear that um, this is something that Tim Cook keeps saying over and over again, and they want to do. And uh, it's so I'm just making in the context of where wither Johnny Ive, that's exactly the kind of thing Johnny would be putting a lot of cycles into because you have to figure out what the UI looks like. You know, all Microsoft's done so far is make a floating start menu, right? Uh, so there's yeah, a there lot was, of thinking that would go into that. This is redesigning the user interface completely. There was some concern that, you know, that he was spending all his time on the car project or that Apple's executives were, you know, totally distracted by the car project. Right. My understanding is very few executives were actually involved in that. And that was more of a project, you know, that, that wasn't really that. I mean, it had drained some talent, but it wasn't really an organizational level. Drain. Right, right. But uh, AI seems like, uh, sorry, not our, or AI too, but augmented reality seems like something that's going to span, like the same way LCD or L, like, or panels span across all our technology now. Yeah. It's just going to be embedded in everything. And, yeah. it's, well, and, I'll, be, and I'll be really interested to, to see, of. And I'll be interested to see how it integrates with things like CarPlay. I mean, you know, the, the idea that you'll be able to, you know, your directions and everything else are going to end up, you know, on the screen in front of you rather than you looking down. I spent a lot of time in the last week um, looking at my directions because I have no idea how to drive through Chicago. <laughs> and, um, and you know, I just kept on, it was almost dangerous to be looking down. There was so much going on. Um, and I and I could definitely see how you'd have, uh, you know, heads up displays, you know, in front of you. And I think that that, that kind of stuff is going to be happening along with glasses and everything else. But that, that's a good example of how uh, uh, multiple technologies combine to create a perfect solution. It's not about putting uh, having an Iron Man sort of uh, a, a HUD where it's just a flurry of, of, of circles and knobs and faces and numbers. Right. It's also deciding that at this moment, the only thing I need to put into the HUD for this driver is a big arrow that flashes and a 3D arrow that, or a 3D set of a. Uh, uh, Custom, uh, custom highway signs that only this user can see that says your turn is coming up in two minutes. And here is, here is, well, I'm going to thread this this arrow right between these two buildings is where you want to go, as opposed to here is your latest email. Here is what Beyonce is tweeting right now. Here is, <laughs> yeah, you well, actually and, and have yeah, to rethink how people use computers. Really, well, and also. I mean, million, you know, millions, possibly billions of dollars have been spent on on what to do with some of these heads up displays, because, of course, we're you know, we use them in, uh, in the military, you know, I mean, pe or people use them in the military where it's life or death if you have too much information, you know, up there uh, or not enough. Yes. And so yes. if you look at the, the heads up displays that are used in Apache helicopters and so on and so forth, I mean, they there's a lot of information there, but it's just what you need when you need it, um, because if you get distracted, you, you die and if you don't get the information, you die. And so th they've been. You know, they've been really work. You know, this this is not a new technology as much as newly applied to something that is more uh, widely used. Yeah. 
All right, let's take a break. We're going to come back. Uh, some uh, opposing opinions on the MacBook Pro, including, and Renee Ritchie, you wrote it up, uh, MacBook Pro is the most techy and expandable laptop Apple has ever <laughs> made. You linked to the Adam Geithner's yeah. uh, uh, Medium post. And when you really find out what the post is about, well, I have a thought about this. We'll talk about it in a moment. <laughs> First, let's talk about Corning. How about that? Optical cables by Corning. I'm not talking about Tupperware here. I'm talking about, or Corningware. Remember Corningware? I'm talking about optical cables by Corning, which is something I use now everywhere. We use in the studio everywhere. And we're not alone. A lot of studios, you know, the problem you have, I'll give you an example, Universal Audio. They make um, uh, Thunderbolt audio interfaces, really good Thunderbolt audio faces, interfaces. And they're testing it. They have recording studios. They're not going to, Want the hard drives, the noisy stuff in the studio. So what they'd like to do is is get all of the Thunderbolt arrays and stuff out of the studio. For that, they use optical cables by Corning to give them acoustic isolation where they test the new equipment like their audio, audio interfaces. And the reason they do, because optical cables have exceptional cable runs. The Thunderbolt cable goes 200 feet without attenuation. The USB 3 cable, 165 feet without attenuation. And so, and they're thinner too and lighter. Look how thin they are. And they're bendable and they're not as fragile as the old days. In fact, I've been bending them, tying them in knots, crimping them, no problem. See, the cool thing about the optical cables by Corning is, uh, in fact, I'm going to do the telestrator here. This is my opportunity <laughs> to, tell us, to telestrate here so you can see the cool thing. Um, let me let me show you what's really cool about these cables. Let's get a let's get a good image of these uh, cables up here so I can I can show you. They um, what they've done that's brilliant, frankly, is you know the issue of course is a lot of the cables that you use, all the cables, all the interfaces are copper. In fact, Thunderbolt was supposed to be optical uh, uh, originally, but it was felt nobody was ready for uh, copper yet. Uh, so they they made these. Um, uh, you know, copper cables. Well, why not make them optical? But here's the trick. It's this thing. It's the dongle at either end of it. It's just, a, it's not even a dongle. It's just, a. it looks like a very nice cable attachment. So there's the standard Thunderbolt. But inside here is all of this electronics that's converting the copper output. There is a, there's a picture of the inside into light and receiving the light and converting it back to copper. So you get 10 gigabits per second bi-directional dual channel with regular Thunderbolt. Go to Thunderbolt 2, you get 20. Go to Thunderbolt 3, 30. No degradation. It is awesome. And, and these cables are very, very robust. Corning Clear Curve VSDN Optical Fiber, which is a, a, a class one laser product. I don't know what that means, but if you do, <laughs> it's important, right? You can well, bend and one of the things that's really on interesting, yeah, we uh, we we have a bunch of these. Uh, I think the thirty meter ones um, that we've used for a variety of projects. And uh, what's incredible is that how much you can pinch them. I know <laughs> you can crimp because, them because you know one of our big problems with we have a lot of fiber, a uh, thousand foot rolls, and all kinds of other stuff to do other things. And the you can't challenge step is on is that just, stuff. You can't. You get well. Yeah, you can step on it and it it won't break. But you get if it gets like between a door and gets kinked or whatever, right. we use them to get out oh, of like I. arenas and stuff. Right. You, uh, you know, suddenly lose signal. Right. And so with these ones, you know, you can get them really wrapped tightly and they, they work great. This is the, they're, they're, this, they're magic. There's a little chip in this. Here's the, here's actually the best picture. The, that's the connector, but there's this little chip in there that does the conversion. That's so cool. It's got a little photo diode here. Um, anyway, these are great cables. They're thinner, lighter, stronger. And they go farther than any cable you've ever used before. I use them now uh, in my office. I have a nice big Drobo array, but I don't want it on my desk because it's got a lot of drives in it. So I, I just, it's off in the distance, <laughs> 60 feet away, <laughs> humming away and with full speed because of uh, optical cables by Corning. Available at all major electronics and professional AV retailers, including Apple stores. Amazon, B and H, optical cables by Corning, longer, thinner, lighter, and stronger. Go to opticalcablesbycorning.com if you want to learn more. And uh, we thank Corning for their support of Mac Break Weekly and for providing both me and Alex with the cables we need to get the job done. I don't have your mission critical situation, but I do. I do really like these. Uh, we are talking about Appful with Renee Ritchie of iMore.com, who is Alex Lindsay's disappeared. 
It's Uh-oh. just a dark hole where Alex Lindsay would, was sitting. He mentioned the cables. He went to get cables, I think. And uh, <laughs> Alex Lindsay uh, from the Pixel Core and uh, Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun Times. So I agree with this, by the way, this article. Uh, the new MacBook Pro is great kind of great for users. hackers. <laughs> <laughs> but the point, yeah. The, so if you and if you just read the headline, you go, oh, interesting. That's why I said, oh, I'm going to click on that. What he's saying is that, oh, thank goodness they use Type-C connectors. Yes, they used an open standard for power and data. That is great if you have, a, and as this guy does, a lot of Type-C stuff. And as he points out, which I think is really important, you don't, unlike, you know, so I have a Type-C powered HP laptop, and I have to use HP's yeah. adapter. Ma Apple, thank you, Apple. I can use anything. I can trickle charge it from my Pixel uh, phone. <laughs> I can I can plug it into anything, and it gets some juice. It'll say, you know, no. But that's, so I agree with him. That's huge, the fact that it's using Type-C. And it's a very un -Apple y thing to do, by the way, is to use a non-proprietary uh, adapter for its power. And I know uh, uh, Apple gets a lot of heat because now you have to buy a lot of dongles. They did reduce the price by half, which is nice. And... And I've said this before. Many of us already, Andy, you're in this boat too, have Type C adapters. Yep. So it's not I, a big deal because it's a standard. No. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, like I keep saying. I mean, I, I I do wish that it had uh, more standard ports so there are fewer dongles. But I like the idea that they've got four ports and you make them whatever you want them to make. Yeah. So it's exactly the way. I, this is the computer of the future in that respect. This computer, this uh, Surface, has. Standard USB adapters and an SD card reader. It's more of the past, and I mean, it doesn't have any Type Cs. And at this point, I want everything I use to have Type C, right? Yeah. So. But it's but it is a desktop, and it's already they're yeah. already getting three. It's already so they here. Got, they, yeah. And also, and also, they they've got enough room so they can actually give you an Ethernet port, right. uh, and they can give you basically <laughs> like a dozen USB Type C <laughs> ports uh, without the without the added expense. But I but I see your point. It really does seem like every device that doesn't have some sort of a USB C acknowledgement is going to be a little bit behind the times. It, it's not quite ubiquitous yet, but now they're. It's just going to get more and more popular as it is a it is a universal standard. Uh, it can handle traffic for just about anything that you want to put into or out of a computer. Uh, and I think in five years' time, it's going to be really, really. Yeah. It's, it's going. To, I'll put it this way: in five years' time, it's going to look a lightning connector is going to look like a major pain in the butt. Well, and, and I think that I think that for. For me, the, the big thing is, is, is as, as someone who travels a lot with their laptop, is still the the MagSafe. <laughs> it's not, well, you know, and I get it. You can I get, get that the whole, belt, that Griffin, or the, I know, but the problem yeah. is, is that sticks out. So what's what, what's going to happen is, is that will get bent. You know, like I mean, it's it's something that you know it, you can't just leave it in there. From my perspective, you know, and so the problem is, is because it's not flush. Um, it I is going to be something that yeah. that gets bent because I got about after the last show I was on, I I got like two hundred twi tweets <laughs> um, that that recommended the Belkin. So I'm, yeah. I, I, I do know it's there. It's, it's the, the problem really is, is that little nub sticking out. Um, I've, I've had like little USB sticks that I leave, I leave in my computer for whatever reason and they get bent, <laughs> you know, you know, th that I guess maybe I travel harder than everybody else, but, um, but that's the concern that, that, that I really have with it. Um, that and just not having, you know, I just felt like on a major upgrade, not having a touch screen, I get, that the interface isn't designed, but if you look at with with the with the window, you know, with our uh, Surface Studio, uh, I don't feel like I need to have everything be touchy. I just want to be able to draw on things no, when I, I want to draw. I agree with you. And you know, so, the, so my point is, I agree with Adam that f for the Type C, Apple should get lots of praise, but it doesn't make the MacBook Pro kind of great for hackers. It just it's 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 a nice feature, just like the, the Touch ID is a nice feature. Yeah, the definition of hacker in that article is. Uh, hacker means for him apparently somebody who's a lot of you know type c phones and things um which i do i'm in that group uh and i like it but notice by the way and i hope corning does this those thunderbolt cables are not type c they're this traditional thunderbolt uh connectors so i have to put an adapter on that um and that bugs me i have a lot of thunderbolt hard drives thunderbolt devices and i can't use them directly on my new macbook pro I had to buy, go out and buy a new compact flash reader. I didn't have to. I could have used an adapter. But, uh, but you know what? If you do go out and get one with a Type-C connector, man, that's fast. Right? Yeah. So and I think that I think that part of it is like I mean I, I just would have been much happier with my the, what I have right now on my on my left and on my right put two two 
Type C connectors, you know, you're like, you know, like, ignore, you know, replace my HDMI yeah. and my and my uh, um, USB on my on my right with two USB C and like let everybody get kind of get used to it. And I get that it's going to force the market forward by just making it only available. But it, it really is, you know, the, the market's not ready for what they did. So you, you buy this now and you've got, you know, an incredible little and, and it's not I me. Mean, and, and admittedly for me. Uh, as someone who produces live events, it's it's a mission critical. It's not the, the, the that's the issue is is that it's not a um, you know every dongle is something else that can get popped out you know during while I'm working right. and for me it's a big deal. So it's so we'll see. I mean I just uh, yeah for bad guy that. hackers uh, Type C will also be a boon. I think it's DMA access right to the bus. There's going to be juice jacking. There's going yeah. to be people who plug it in and get control of your like. There was an exploit where if you left a browser open, people could plug in a USB dongle yeah. and get. I mean, that that kind of stuff is when someone has physical access to your computer and there is a bus like that, it's going to be problematic. Yeah. It, I yeah. think the trade off is worthwhile, but it's a good thing to remember. Keep people away from your system. And I will say, I think the touch ID and also, and, locks. Yeah. right. If, and, and also, if, if you if you if you're if you're on the subway and you find like a USB key someplace yes. somewhere, doesn't matter if it's 128 gigabytes and it's a, a genuine SanDisk. Yeah. Don't do not don't use put it. it in your computer. Don't put it. Especially in your if you computer. work for the Defense Department, if you're in the Army, <laughs> anything government related. I need everybody's help for security. If you find unattended USB dongles, please report. Yeah. Them. yeah. Well, uh, and, and I will I admit, mean, if I get one, the number one reason I'll get one is because of the Touch ID, because I really feel like, I mean, the more you get used to using Touch ID with the phone, the more insecure, like I don't almost ever log into Bank of America anymore, uh, you know, with uh, on my computer. I agree. Like, I feel like I that's agree. an insecure connection. Secure I, I'd rather phone. use my phone yeah. because it's more secure. Yeah, I agree with that. Do yeah. um, uh, did we talk about this? Uh, I can't remember. Or maybe I talked about it on a tweet. Do you, my recommendation for a lot of people is just get the, the no touch uh, MacBook Pro. If you need a new MacBook Pro, Renee, would you it's, disagree with that? I, if you were, if you always wanted a Retina MacBook Air, I think that's a really good upgrade. But if you you're giving up two ports, it only has two of the USB C ports, not four of them, and it has the lowest end processor. Um, you can't expand and no everything. GPU. Yeah, only the 15 inch has discrete GPU, but that's yeah. that's become. I mean, the, the Intel embedded Iris Pro is pretty good now, so that's become more of a niche need. You know, that's not even on the 13 inch maxed out version, but it, it really is those lack of ports and the the lower specs. So again, if if you want to travel, if you want a light machine to take with yeah. you, it's 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 a good choice, but it's not it's not a MacBook Pro. If choice. you need a new MacBook Pro, but I do think the Touch ID is nice. I can live with the Touch Bar not being particularly useful. I haven't used this. There's a new couple of new apps, Touch Switcher. And Rocket, have you tried these, Renee? That let you um, put app. I don't. This seems like a bad idea, but put app icons on your yeah. I mean, on your uh, touch what, bar. What, this to me is like super interesting. It's like when notification. It's like when the uh, notification center widgets came out, and there was like Launch Center Pro in there and things. It's like th this is the worst that this touch bar will ever be because. <laughs> <laughs> the apps haven't really figured it out yet. Right. I mean, Apple has some really good implementations and some really not great ones, and developers didn't even really see it before they started launching their apps. And I think like PCalc uh, is terrific on this, and some other uh, some other apps are really just recapitulations of what their on-screen men menus do. But you know, three months from now, six months from now, a year from now, uh, they're going to figure at least a lot more of this stuff out, and it won't just be like Doom or like I'd like to see some passive information. Um, put on there something with a Twitter I'm feed. I'm sure so. the people who write those little utilities that pop up, you know, what's your CPU? iStat menu. iStat menu, that's the yeah. one. I can't believe that iStat menu isn't, and it's pretty easy to do, right? It seems like the, it's, if you could put Doom on it, it must be fairly easy to do. Like yeah. we can all yell in the general direction of Australia and Mark Edwards yeah. and ask him Come on, to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And then I wouldn't, you know, I don't, I, I, you can turn it into function key mode, by the way. There's a switch yeah. which just puts function keys up. Um, but I I don't need function keys that much. I would probably run iStat menu instead or something like that, and be perfectly happy. I just wish it yeah, weren't well, so expensive. It's dynamic, I feel like I'm paying for the uh, for the Touch Bar that I don't really use much. You are. You're basically buying an Apple Watch that's embedded inside your yeah. MacBook. That's it's almost literally what it is. Wow. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, so the, yeah, there's some in, so this is some interesting uses. I guess I should try this. This is Rocket, which uh, lets you launch. Uh, apps puts puts the apps yeah. right up on the uh, control bar there. 
Yeah, cool. And it's the same thing. It's sort of like, you know, we were joking when the Apple Watch first came out is do you really need it? And it was it saved you a reach for your phone in some situations. Right. And this saves me a few menu clicks here, a few searches there, a few uh, keyboard shortcuts there. And if that adds up to a beneficial thing for you, then that's great. If you're so programmed into already using your Mac, then it's just going to be in your way. Right. I do really I like the, having a 28-inch iPad, though. I think this is... <laughs> Apple should definitely consider this. <laughs> I'm loving it. And, and everyone made fun of that when, when people said, oh, Apple's going to have a 28-inch, but but it, it turns out that it's quite nice. Yeah. I'm I'm a little more sold on this. Uh, Jason Snell uh, on SixColors.com actually write this, uh, writes this for Macworld, says, uh, this is an opinion piece, but why Apple probably won't go to arm and i thought this one might be one direction it would take the mac to make it more like ios and uh put it on arm and i'm sure intel you know in their in their nightmares at night worries about this uh do you agree though that uh arm is you know there's good reasons why arm should do it jason says uh the transition from intel would be too painful not that apple hasn't done a similar transition before. I don't think it's a pri I don't think it's enough of a priority for Apple. I think I agree with what there's he said. Not enough the very advantages. Time. There's not enough. There's not enough upside for Apple to make the change and force yeah. everybody to make the change when it's such a small part of their uh, their market at this point. Yeah, it's interesting which way you look at it though. And there's a lot of nuance here. It's the same way when they say like the Mac and and iOS will never converge. You know that. This is this is all depends on how you think about it. So would they take like an iMac and run that on ARM, a Mac Pro and run that on ARM? But is there a case to be made that they would take a device that looks very much like a MacBook Air but is running ARM and is running iOS, and you know and has versions of the apps that are designed for that architecture? That's a new thing that has elements of both, and that those those I believe are already in prototype. And it depends, you know, if they decide ever to pull that trigger. But the iPad is getting more pro, and some people do really like clamshell form factors, right. and they don't they don't want to make touch screen mac os but they already have touchscreen ios so there's there's a lot of things that could exist in between what we consider an uh, arm mac and you know, I don't know yeah. what literally well and, and i think that for me i yep. mean i the, with the macbook the ipad pro is almost there you know with the i get i have that i think uh, the lo loggy or whatever um you know it's already in a clamshell <laughs> it's already bigger than my my air uh but it is uh, and, and the touchscreen works great the only problem is you know a really good file system and the ability to import video well yeah, you know, like th those are the problems. Yeah, yeah there, there, there are a lot of hangups. It also needs a way that you can interact with the screen without taking your hands off the keyboard. Uh, better than uh, keyboard shortcuts. It's a. I, I did read that article when it came out. It's the thing is, I, I feel like I've, I'm, of, I've, I'm of two different polar <laughs> uh, thoughts about it. One is that Apple won't go to. Uh, Apple will definitely go to ARM because. It allows them to reclaim some of their own destiny. They're uh, it's they're doing more and more stuff where they can't put as uh, the, the 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 pixie dust that they sprinkle over all their devices. The, the pixie dust has to extend into the CPU, and that's not something that they can do with uh, with uh, Intel chips. Uh, and that clearly they're moving away from the uh, making machines that are going to be attractive to people who need really, really super powerful machines. They're uh, making machines that are more attractive to people who need something for more casual use, uh, things that are lighter, thinner, uh, have longer battery life, and that all points to ARM. Uh, the only, but the hang up is that I do think that we're in a period where we can no longer just assume that Apple is committed to continuing to uh, to support the Mac. I don't mean that I think that they're planning to ditch it, but I'm saying that what can a, a year ago I would have said, well, of course, I don't see any signs that they have any uh, they have any reason uh, not to uh, not to keep uh, doing Macs. Now, after the past year, seeing both a li letting major product lines in the Mac lit lie completely fallow, creating a MacBook Pro that is a really severe break from how they used to define the high end of their uh, of, of their line. May, I do think I do have to, uh, even as a consumer, consider the possibility that Apple already knows that. Look, we're not going to be making these after 2022. We do. Why put Why put ourselves through the pain of doing a really huge platform uh, rearchitecturing when we know we're not going to we're not interested in do, in 
continuing this uh, any further. But uh, by the same by the same coin, it could be that we know that uh, we're going to continue to do the Mac, o Mac OS, but we're going to make such a radical change to it that small changes in 2016 or 2017 or 2015 are going to be wasted when it's all thrown away in 2018 when we finally unveil the new version of Mac OS 12 or Mac OS 13. So uh, I don't I, I don't I wouldn't rule it out. Uh, if, I wouldn't rule it out at all. The one thing that you know, to Andy's point, um, it is incredibly frustrating. And like, I, I, again, people are going to say that I'm making apologies here, but it's it's incredibly frustrating if you look at it from Apple's perspective, where they control everything in an iOS device, and you look at the A10 chipset, and you look at what they even did with the A9 chipset compared to Intel's uh, Core M line, and it's it's night and day. Apple's producing some of the best um, silicon right now in the business, and they have no control over Intel. And Intel had a very painful. Uh, process going into 14 nanometer with Skylake and features kept getting pushed out and features are still being pushed out. A lot of the stuff that they want, like the LDDDR4 and the DisplayPort 1.4, that stuff is just being pushed out to KB Lake, to Coffee Lake, to Cannon Lake, and there's no clear end in sight. And you look at what what is upsetting a lot of people about these Macs, and it, it's, yes, yeah, some of it is choices Apple made. They could use desktop components or they could use different architectures, but to make the kind of machines they want to make, they just don't have the parts available. And these machines were supposed to ship early in the Year, and it just literally Intel and AMD could not get their acts together. And at a certain point, the frustration level to that, I think, is going to be so severe that Apple is starts looking at, at homegrown alternatives and whether it is like a, an x86 license or whether it is an ARM-based computer, it's just going to to make the devices that they want to make. I don't think they're going to be able to rely on on other companies shipping on time because clearly for the last two years and yeah, the, the Mac Pro is, is completely embarrassing but if you look at the other devices there's almost nothing in there that you that could not be fixed by those companies having shipped the silicon they said that they would ship in the time frame they said that they would ship it uh, and i and i don't know how much longer apple will put up with that one of jason snell's points too is that uh yeah apple has the manpower to to create a custom chip for mac os but sad to say <laughs> uh it would be probably a mistake to to take any energy and put it into the Mac at this point. Uh, well, I think I think a lot of us think that that you know that there's an unlimited. I mean, Apple has all the money in the world. They could have you know they uh, could hire as many people as they need. But really, there is a limited supply of great engineers. You know, like great, not not yeah. good ones, not average ones, but great right. engineers that are required to work at the level that they're working at. Um, there is and and every and everyone that can do that well is gainfully employed and it's very competitive and Apple has to set priorities on, you know, what they're going to spend engineering resources on. And, and it doesn't, I don't think it makes sense for them to necessarily do that on a more niche market, you know, and, and, and well, like Andy spoke to earlier, I'm trying to figure out what, what happens here. I mean, I think that when we think yeah. about, uh, when we look down the path and we're not sure whether Apple is going to continue to really invest in in the professional market, uh, you know, that has all kinds of ripples. You know, it has, you know, should I be using Final Cut Pro? Should I be using OmniGraffle? Should I be using, you know, all those things start to become these, you know, these Mac only solutions start to uh, you start to think about whether that makes sense uh, when you're looking at a two, three, four year trajectory. Uh, if you don't feel like Apple is really going to move down that path. So it affects more than just Apple. It affects all of these uh, support systems that are around them. Yeah, I mean that that's the point. I mean, they 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 do have a limited uh, limited uh, uh, personnel to attack any problem, but they can do anything they want to do if they think it's important, if it's something that they want to do. And I think that it really remain no matter what Apple might say when they're asked this question, it remains to be seen if they are committed to the Mac at this point. We um, we're looking now at this point we're kind of really sifting through the embers looking for signs that uh, the Mac is part of Apple's future. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit it, but at, and I've only had this for a day, but at this point, I'm really close to thinking I should get one of these to replace the iMac at home. I'm talking about the Surface Studio. Um, I think that that's the real risk at this point for Apple is that they are going to be out innovated if they're not careful. Well, and also it, it this becomes is, an this ecosystem. This is really issue. what an app, this should have been, maybe they will, who knows? In fact, next break, uh, we're going to talk about what Apple might be doing in, in the All new the year. I would, yeah, I would love to see <laughs> Apple do this. Um, but uh, but I think they won't because of the touch. And um, I just, I, I well, feel and I like think that, this is my next I, computer. 
This is what and I, I want. think that there's there's this chain reaction that 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 occurs if that start if Apple falls behind on this I think it's more important than them just it's 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 more of a problem than just 15 percent of their market, you know the uh, if you start you know right now at an airport or most of the most well of the it's not going to make me run out and buy a Windows phone. Right. No, no, no. I wouldn't say no, that. I don't know but, the but, HP elite, Leo. <laughs> Actually, yeah, all right, maybe. Yeah. But there's a certain lock-in that uh, yeah. that starts to break up no, when you. I don't think it's a Windows Phone necessarily, but there's all these other things that you start moving away from. You know, once the you know the the uh, all my Apple stuff works together and my whole life kind of makes sense with all these things connected, starts to get broken up. Yeah. It starts to weaken the entire platform, you know, and. And we have to remember that a lot of people who are making decisions are making them, you know, using a Mac. <laughs> if they stop doing that, then they start going back to making them using, you know, Windows or, or something else. Um, and, you know, that that's the, you know, I remember talking to, I think I told, talked about this years ago, but when we were talking about Flash and I was talking to a guy in an airport and he said, oh, I have to rewrite our whole website because the CEO got an iPhone and he can't get to the website. Right. And now right. I have to change everything. And it had it, 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 it didn't, it's just not one guy having an, uh, a, an iPhone. It had, it affected you know enormous you know had enormous impact and i so i think that uh, i think it's risky for apple not to pay attention to this market but i do but i'm not sure they will you know and i and i guess i would say i'm not sure they are i think that the aggressive move we saw with connections to the macbook pro uh, you you make those kind of bold statements when um there's less risk involved <laughs> you know in my mm -hmm, opinion mm -hmm. Well, it's also, I mean, you could be really rich and you could just have a couple of people at your house and you're like, oh, we can't cut the grass and blow the snow. And as much as we really want, you know, to cut the grass, we're going to have to blow the snow this year. Uh, and it's just the kind of tough choices that any small group of people make. And then you can get an argument about whether that should be a big group of people and you should change to a, a different kind of organizational structure. But, you know, that that's not a that's not something most companies survive. Let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk positives. Let's talk futures. What is Apple up to for next year? We should be getting new iPads. We can even uh, do a little bit of talking about the iPhone 8. I've talked to a lot of people now who deferred on the iPhone 7, even though they were due. It was their two-year anniversary. Uh, you know, they had iPhone 6. I talked to somebody yesterday. said, you know, it's not enough of a change. I think I'm going to wait for 8. And uh, and so angry. Apple took away their bezels and they're charging wirelessly. <laughs> well, I'm curious. Just, I yeah. don't get it. Let's see. We'll see. We'll talk a little bit about I want to lift us up a little bit because it is kind of gloomy to start talking about horrors. Microsoft doing a better desktop than Apple. <laughs> um, this is their I should point out this is Microsoft's first desktop computer. They've done laptops. They just yeah. gotten this business re relatively recently. Yep. Um, uh, to come out of the box with a desktop computer that's as compelling as this is pretty impressive. Uh, let's take a break. Talk about Rocket Mortgage. Talk about impressive. Rocket Mortgage is bringing the mortgage process into the 21st century. Fast, powerful, most importantly, I think to you and to me, completely online. Gone are the days when you want to go into the mortgage office and apply for a loan and bring back boxes of paper or even go through the paperwork upstairs in the attic or in your filing cabinet trying to find bank statements and pay stubs. Not with Rocket Mortgage. You can do it all online, including file bank statements and pay stubs with a touch of a button. You don't even have to get up from the couch. You can do it on your phone or your tablet. And it's fast. It's easy. But you'll also get loan approval within minutes, and it'll be a custom loan tailored for your specific needs. That's the beauty of this. Rocket Mortgage comes to you from Quicken Loans, the premier absolute premier mortgage loan company in the united states the number one mortgage lender in the u.s and they've made a product that is designed for us geeks online quick and easy you can manage it from the convenience of your couch if you're ready to refi or maybe you want to buy a new house maybe it's maybe it's a few months from now who knows maybe you'll be at an open house on sunday and say remember that what was that leo was talking about rocket mortgage where is that quickenloans.com Slash Mac break. That's what you need to remember. Quickenloans.com slash Mac break. They call it Rocket Mortgage, but it's at Quickenloans.com slash Mac break. Equal housing lender licensed in all 50 states. NMLS Consumer Access org number 3030. We thank Rocket Mortgage from Quicken Loans by for giving us uh, the wherewithal to do Mac break weekly. Renee Ritchie from iMore.com. Alex Lindsay from Pixelcore.com. And of course, Andy. He's gone again. <laughs> I, you feel like he's he's secretly tending to something extremely. I think important. he's coming for your cake. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I want to eat that cake. 
Did you see that? We didn't talk about it yet. Uh, it's my birthday today. Happy birthday, It's a Leo. big birthday. It's my 60th birthday today. Six it's also up. next month, the anniversary, not even next month, like in a, two weeks, the 40th anniversary of getting my FCC third class license and beginning my career in broadcasting. 40 years. I remember, the, you know, back then looking at job listings that said, you have to have three to five years experience. And I thought, oh, that'll, that'll, that's forever. <laughs> Don't see many job listings saying you need to have 40 years of experience, unfortunately. Maybe, maybe that's... I'm on the other side, aren't I now? Uh, but Lisa went out and got me a cake that they took. She brought them, I guess, the bobblehead. And they have crafted with fondant a cake that says, Happy Birthday, Leo, and has me on it. The bobblehead of me on it. It is a terrifying likeness, but it's, probably, it's really wild. I, I don't even know what's inside. It could just be cardboard, but I have a feeling it's really good cake. Anyway, That's thank crazy. you. Can you just hold it next to the monitor and Andy and I will try to take a bite? It, it's, it smells <laughs> really good. I could smell yeah, it. I was going to say, you, you, you want terrifying. Wait until like someone you know is biting into your head. <laughs> yeah, we should actually, maybe that, we'll save that part. That's screensaver. Yeah, we'll save that. <laughs> uh, maybe a rat will bite into it if I save it too long. So happy news. Let's talk about happy news. Uh, Apple, uh, well, you saw 91% of all the smartphone profits in the world go into Apple's pocket. That's that's enough to make Apple look at stuff when people say, oh, that MacBook Pro, it ain't all it should be, and go, well, yeah, who cares? Who cares? This is for Q3 2016, not even Q4, uh, which will be mostly uh, the new iPhone sales. 91% of profits worldwide. So sell all the phones you want, Samsung. Doesn't matter. Hey, they have a jet black one coming out, Leo. You just wait. I would yeah. buy you a jet. You know, I would buy a jet black iPad. Do you think they'll do jet black iPads? I wonder how resilient <laughs> the process is at scale yeah. because it's, yeah, it's already it's, chips and scratches. Well, I also, also I, wonder how many rejects they get in the manufacturing process just for yeah, just probably. for that small area. I love it so much uh, that I just didn't. I this you know I I really couldn't. It's really that much better. This. It's really come like over the, the, and feel the, it. I agree. I, I agree with you. I, I was. I, I'm not someone who get who gets all, all starry eyed about like, oh look, look at the design of the color of the, the outside of it before I put my case on it. But I was like, that's just, that's a really nice. Uh, that's a really nice piece of. It looks. It looks like an enameled cigarette case from the 1920s it's, of somebody who had style and money. Yes, it's very stylish. And uh, I have the micro abrasions. I'm fairly careful, but I still put it in my pocket and stuff. And on the corner, particularly where you kind of slide it into things, there are very fine abrasions you can barely see unless you angle it just so. Yeah. And I find that just a nice patina of wear. I can live with it's, that. It's good, good, honest wear, as they say yeah. on Antiques Roadshow. It's how you know it's Millennium not a fake. Falcon. Yeah. It's Millennium Falcon. Yeah. It's Falcon. Well, it's not that bad. That's, <laughs> that thing was a box of bolts. It's not a hunk, it's they, a hunk of junk, but it's a fastest ship the side of the galaxy. Don't forget, I'll, Alex I'll, Lindsay designed Princess, uh, the Princess Amidala's did not design it. I mean, did not painted it, it, whatever, I, created I, I it. I put some texture but on that it. That was, was it. That thing was scratch proof. That was that thing. Beautiful. That thing was shiny new out of the factory. You know, I, I realized if they I got a scratch on it, they trashed I, it, and he modeled into one. <laughs> that's that's the sort, that's that a I, sort of. That's the sort of design you can commit to when you have an unlimited supply of unpaid slave robot yeah, labor. That's right. To, to Buffing polish out and the buff. scratches. Yeah. Gungans. Gungans. Well, I, I, you know, I went to, uh, I was in Chicago over the weekend and, and, um, uh, and I went to the bean and I realized that all of my, the scale <sighs> and all my grit was off on the queen ship. Cause I was sitting there like oh. looking at it going, Oh, it was actually much the bean finer. It's gotta be in inspired by princess Alma, Amidala's starship. I don't know, but it was. I, I wish it had existed when I was working on the textures because yeah. it was. It was. It's the perfect uh, scale, uh, you know, test for for Chrome. So I it was, pretty it was, much can guarantee that nobody saw who saw episode one was saying to themselves, you know, the grit is just the scale of the grit is off. <laughs> Not well, one scale correct. The reality is, is it would just look so smooth. You know, the, the whole thing was trying to give it some scale. You know, yeah. so you had to figure out how to give it enough grit that it just it had a uh, scale. And the, the hardest part is actually the sun coming across because the when something comes across a really smooth surface, the dust on the on the surface actually lights up before the surface does, you know, because the dust is just a little off. If you watch your desk, when the sun comes across, you'll see all it goes across all your dust and then it hits the desk anyway. So those were that's that was my life for like a year and a half. It's a, a J Type three twenty seven Nubian Royal Starship. I have to apologize for not using <laughs> the proper terminology, but boy, was that a pretty B 
beast. What's a new hell of a ride? <laughs> it's a it's a very shiny fifties version of an SR SR seventy one. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Was it, yes. it was the was it modeled on the Blackbird? Uh yes. Yeah. It it's is like the X. It's Inspired. like the X Men, but, but classy. Inspired by. Yeah, it, it, looks, it looks like an industry things. award for aerospace. Sorry. It looks like an industry award in the aerospace engineering uh, <laughs> spec sector. That's pretty gorgeous. Yeah, it, so according to Wikipedia, it is uh, it is the Naboo Royal Starship is a modified J Type three twenty seven Nubian starship. Queen, I, I said princess, but she was Queen Amidala. Yes, the elected then. queen. Yeah, elected queen. That's what we need. Yes. We all need that. We all need electric. By the way, I've, I'm, in, I'm going through my pockets, and I realize this is, I carry this in my pockets all the time. This is a type C to USB adapter. <laughs> this is like, I carry this in my pocket. This like is what a, we've reduced you to. It's like, yep. it's like a worry bead. <laughs> I just have this because you never you know, know. You know, Sandisk has, uh, well, no, I'll save that for later. Oh, save it. Something good? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know what, in fact, I know because uh, Father Robert showed me one. Uh, we'll talk about it in a little bit. Okay, new micro bezel iPad micro bezel. Micro bezel, all the things. Delete not all a the mini bezels. bezel, not a tiny bezel, but a micro bezel. It's a 10.9 inch iPad with a footprint the same as a 9.7 inch iPad, but thicker. This is coming from Ben Lovejoy at 9 to 5 Mac. Actually, originally came from Mako Takara, which is a Japanese uh, site, but it's in Japanese, so we can't really understand what I think they have saying. English at the bottom. Do they? Oh, here yeah. it is. Okay. Um, according to an informed source in Taiwan, the bezel-less 10.9-inch iPad model is the same size as the 9.7, but it's a little thicker. <laughs> Seven and a half millimeters. <laughs> That's the same doomed. as the iPad Air. So uh, doomed. doomed. How will they survive? It's not bezel-less, by the way. In fact, it's not even really a micro-bezel, is it? Uh, the bezel... Is you have to have enough to handle the product, it turns right. out. Right. <laughs> and a camera. Yeah. Now, this but this might be uh, telegraphing a big change coming to Apple that has been rumored for the iPhone 8, the removal of the physical home button. That's been in the works. Like I think I, wrote, I started writing about that three years ago, that that was a project that they were looking to, because it, it's hard to make devices that are have bigger screens but are still comfortable for the hand. And that was one of the projects was to see if they could maximize the ratio of screen uh, to surface on the front of devices. And to do that, you had to, I mean, Apple's a victim of their own forward thinking sometimes. So they, they put Touch ID in the home button and that makes it harder to remove. If they hadn't put Touch ID there, then you just throw away the home button. It's fine. But then you got to figure out some other place to put Touch ID now. Uh, and it's the same to some extent with Lightning. Like if you didn't do, they got Lightning, let them get to a better connector three years earlier, but now everyone's going USB-C. And can you change people? Uh, you know, how many years do you have to wait before you change people again? So this is one well, of those I don't things know. where, sorry. I was going to say, I don't know if, 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 if Apple would put the USB-C on, on the phone because it gives up if all the control been ready that they back have. Then. So the control is super nice, but my understanding is very the same team worked on Lightning and USB-C, and it was 10 years after um, the dock connector, and it just USB-C wasn't happening. And they tend not to be a very patient company. Sometimes they're incredibly patient, like with radio technologies, but they just needed to move forward, and there was no guarantee when USB-C would be available. And they, I think they got to market in 2000, was it 2012? With uh, Lightning, which gave them four years that they would have still been on a dock connector otherwise. And that's, you know, four years is a long time in technology, especially when they wanted to reduce the size for iPhone 5 and for iPad Air 2 and all those other devices. Uh, so a lot of the stuff is like things, it's like shooting bullets that are already in the air. Uh, a lot of the timing on these things. And I think the it took them a, many years to get to the bezel-less design, and maybe they wanted to get it out this year. Uh, but I think next year for sure we'll start seeing those those brand new designs. How do they? So what do they do for a home button? It's the ta right now the haptics. I mean, right now it's a virtual home button already. It's it's entirely virtualized. It just has yeah, a separate area. So is it on the screen? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I believe that was one of the. I don't know if that's going to be end up what they end up shipping, yeah. but at least some of them were. There was an area of the screen basically that would be a virtual home button. Right. It would be super super difficult to pull that off without some sort of tactile uh, landing pad. You could you could get by feel. 
Um, if that, I'm sure they wouldn't do that unless they're unless they were very very confident that there was a way that it would not interfere with people who uh, don't have the gift of sight, don't have the ability to see a uh, see a, a oh, limited yeah, target. There's no, uh, there's well, no there feedback. are back of the device options like Android has, and there's also side button options that I think you know that have been tested as well. I mean, it, I guess it depends yeah. on which one works best when they have to build and, it. And of course, the, the hard part is if you have something like this, you know, it becomes more complicated to have something on the back. Yeah, and the, and the other thing is it has to be really, really good at uh, unwanted tap uh, rejection because the the a bezel is actually really important. You got to have a place to hold that thing uh, without without uh, tip tapping on, a, on an ad on a web page. Uh, one of the things I like about the newest uh, uh, Kindles is that it just has this this really thick margin on the side of it, so it doesn't matter how you hold it, you can hold it safely uh, without uh, accidentally triggering anything. So. And I hope that I hope they I'm sure I'm sure they thought about this, but it's going to be it's it's not it's a non-trivial thing on so many different levels to reduce the size of the bezel. You got to it is like the proverbial wanting to pet a porcupine. You can do it. You got to really want to do it, though. It's one of those things <laughs> where when Apple doesn't do it, they're not innovating. They're doomed. Why can't they get hardware design yeah. up? You know, Samsung can do it. And then when they do do it, I was like, why the hell did they do this? It's right. the worst. Uh, well. All right. Uh, I do like the idea. I, look, I'm, I'm convinced now that the iPad Pro is the future for the iPad. Are they going to eliminate non-pro iPads? Are these going to be the, the the new iPads will all be pros? Everything is pro, then nothing is. That's sort of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Incredibles line. I think uh, they're just going to add those features. Like they'll add pencil support <clears throat> and they'll add smart connector support. Yeah. And eventually all the iPads will just have those features. And then they'll figure out how to brand it, the new iPad. Okay. Something. Okay. That makes sense. Uh, what is it? It's, I, I've been really resisting talking about the iPhone 8. Is it time? We can. I mean, I think the wireless charging, if they can do what, what, you know, what, what I think they're going to do with it. And it, you, it just it doesn't you do that. Pass. But how, you do that. You can't do that with a metal device. So what it, so the rumor is it's going to go back to glass. You can. I mean, Qualcomm filed a patent two years ago that was inductive charging through yeah, metal. Right. But I don't know of anyone who's actually deployed it uh, in right. real life yet. Uh, but I think Apple has been working on and, you know, and this was I don't think it's a secret anymore because it's been talked about for a couple of years. Distance charging where you don't need to go put it on a little pad. You put it next to your iMac or you put it like it, you come in a room that has a device, which is what makes those router rumors really weird. Because right. What device would that be? And you, you ha it has some sort of station. And if you're within range of that station, it just charges, uh, which is sort of kind of. I don't want to use the word magical, but that is sort of magical. It's like air charging. How many times do you forget to plug? Yeah, how many times do you forget to actually yeah. plug in? Wow. Where this would just like it would be like you know it was great when they made the time capsule and it would just back up. So if you walk into a room and it just charges, that would be fantastic. Right. Um. Okay. Anything else to say? What, when do you think this will be? Spring, March that we'll announce the new iPads. Uh, so probably. far, yeah, I believe yeah. It's, yeah, spring, and then again fall for the iPhones, right? And probably the the, the other Macs, like the desktop e Macs, in the spring as well. Oh, let's talk about that. That's I knew I had some. So what do we? Whether the Macs, we're we gonna see iMacs, we're we gonna see Mac Pros, we're we gonna see Mac Minis. What are we gonna see? It's the same thing. I mean, Apple uses doesn't use big desktop components for most of their computers, so they suffer the same constraints that they have on the MacBook Pros with things yeah. like the like, like Intel. As of last year, Intel wasn't making chips anymore for the twenty the two twenty one point five inch iMac, so Apple kept the old chip uh, and just used faster versions of it. So what do you do this year? I mean, there's just no Skylake version of it, and you know, KB Lake I don't think was ready, at least not in the quad core version or the ones with the Iris Pro graphics that they also use in addition to. The discrete graphics for power saving. I love power saving on the desktop is kind of silly, but you know all, all stuff is embedded in there. Uh, and, and just you know, you're you're again, you're on Intel and AMD's timeline, and you could just rev the iMac and stick USB-C ports along the back, but that's that's not a proper rev. And then you know, again, they're not innovating. So I think those are just constrained by timeline, and we'll see those in the spring. And they'll just be souped-up versions of sort of what we have now with USB-C, Thund Thunderbolt three. I, I think that I, I do think that there's getting to a point uh, for Apple in the same way that I think iTunes got to a point where it critically had to have a subscription service. Uh, I think that they critically have to have touchscreen in the next IMAX or they're going to start, you know, seeing a lot of desertion. No, that's I, really I thought that was just a foregone conclusion that that's not never going to happen. That's never going to happen. You think that's going to happen? They'd have to rewrite think, Mac think, OS. The thing is, I guess I would argue that you don't. You know, like like I've definitely you know worked with uh, touch screens that have been converted, iMacs that have been converted for touch. You know, and those are okay. Uh, it's just fine. Like this whole thing yeah. is just, uh, it's just, just you don't need it. to read. 
I, I can still use a mouse and a keyboard. And then when I want to draw on something, I can draw on it. You know, like, like I don't need it. I don't need you to change every little button. You know, you right. can do that over time if you want, but just let me draw when I want to draw and, and work when I want to work. And, 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 you know, I think that, uh, you know, Microsoft is way ahead of them and, and it's going to become problematic for them if they, if they don't sort it out soon, you know, in the same way that they lost, I mean, they never needed to see the music industry to Spotify. You know, it was, you know, hanging on to ownership for three or four years longer than they had to, um, you know, was cost them a lot. Well, now I might have to hold off because I was really thinking of getting a Surface Studio in my home to replace. Well, it may not ship until next spring anyway, Leo. So you, you probably mm. by the time you can get one, you'll be able to at least the, see the, the other. Here's the problem. Okay. This one that we have in front of me, I ordered uh, right away is the base unit, which is three, $3,000. <laughs> and it's only an i5. It's only eight gigs of RAM. It It's kind of underpowered. Uh, so the one that I would probably want if I'm going to replace a very nice uh, 5K iMac was is $4,000. That's a lot of money for something I'm only using for four months. Yeah. Well, I don't it's, think you only use it for four months. I think it's well, pretty that's solid the thing. It, but, well, but, okay, so, okay, that's a question. I don't, first of all, I don't buy that they ever do a touchscreen, period. But if they did, would I then feel like, oh, crap, I should have bought a touchscreen iMac? I, don't, I, I doubt it. I don't, I don't see them ever, ever doing I that. Think they do it. They would have to, uh, the only way that they would do that is if, like I said before, if they have... They they plan to pull the damnedest rabbit out of the hat they were ever they've ever pulled, and they're hiding. They've been in secret developing the uh, true yeah. next generation version of the Mac, in which they are. If, if they because if they were to do that, then they would have to severely inconvenience everybody at every level whatsoever. Yeah. And so they could they would they've got no problems with doing that, but they would want to have a big upshot, which is to say, hey, look, we've actually got something that it's we've taken everything we've learned from we, we've 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 spoken before about how we've taken what we've learned about the Macintosh and used it to improve iOS and taken everything we've learned about iOS and used it to improve Mac OS. And now we've taken everything we've learned about everything to create a brand <laughs> new version of the Mac. We'd like to show it to you right now. Amazing. That's yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. I mean, you can never say never because things like Swift, you, you there were so few know. people knew about yeah. Swift that Craig yeah. had to send out an email to his entire organization at WWDC to say, hey, we've got this new thing called Swift. And they just all yeah. smacked their heads yeah. collectively. And like the new MacBook Pro, most of the people involved in that keynote, sorry, the new Mac Pro, most people involved in that keynote had never even heard of it. So there are, the, Apple's one of those companies that really could pull a rabbit out of their hat. But the amount of work that it would take to make a good, good touchscreen iMac, I think is hard to, hard to contain. Uh, I we I kind of abandoned the uh, iPhone rumors prematurely. According to Nine to Five Mac, again Ben Lovejoy, Apple is working with LG on a 3D camera. Uh, this comes actually from the Korea Economic Daily, a dual camera module, which supports 3D photography. Now we've seen this before. HTC did a dual lens camera that did 3D to very little interest. Nobody wanted it. In fact, people didn't like it. Remember that CES? Everything was 3D. Everything was Howard 3D. Howard Stringer briefly. and Seth Rogen yeah. in 3D glasses, and then every camera was 3D. And I think a dual. I I really like what they've done with the dual uh, yeah. sensors on the new iPhone 7s and the 7, not 7s. I just made that up on the new 7 Plus uh, because it's. Uh, I use it all the time. It's nice to have that zoom. They're super serious about cameras because they know it's one of the things that That's makes people great. upgrade, yeah. and they they put a lot of of wood behind the arrows on the camera yeah. and the photos teams. How yeah. about this curved screen stuff and uh, OLED? I would hear conf conflicting stories on OLED that there aren't enough OLEDs in the world to, for Apple to make an OLED screen. This is the latest though from Wall Street Journal uh, yesterday. An iPhone with curved screen could be on store shelves as soon as next year. Apple's suppliers say they've been asked to increase the output of thinner OLED displays and uh, apparently, according to 9to5Mac, there's many as nine prototypes being passed around at Apple right now. Uh, and they also want to do higher resolution than the current Samsung OLEDs, which would be very interesting. Apple has never been a leader in the resolution race. I'm they sorry, 10 when prototypes. When they first did Retina, they leapt ahead in terms yeah. of resolution. Um, and then they were quite happy with that. And they'll probably do the same sort of, there'll be one next jump and they'll be happy with that for oh, a few you, years. That's, I stand corrected. You're right. The Retina, the first Retina iPhone was the first to really do a high res display. And then everybody did even higher res. Well, and, and, I, and I haven't used any phones with curved surfaces. What, what do we really think is the 
the key advantage of a curved surface. I don't get that at all. It's it's cosmetic. Yeah, in fact, I was I thinking uh, about the Galaxy S8, which I presume will be announced in the spring at Mobile World Congress. And uh, the rumor is there going to be a, there's going to be a curved and a non-curved uh, edition. And I had the curved Note, I had the curved S6, the S7. I'm thinking I just want a flat screen. That's not I'm not the edge is curved, like as curved as the edge, or it goes just, around a little bit. Right? Yeah. So the idea for the curve originally, like when they made the iPhone 6 um, version, was because people were using edge, like they built edge gestures into iOS, yeah. and that would be more comfortable for you to do things like pulling from the left yeah, or right side not. if you didn't have a sharp edge it's annoying. Uh, under your finger. Yeah, it's a little annoying. Um, I, I actually would love to have a feature where I could turn off all the side swipe stuff because it's yeah. like I think I get I get all that side swipe stuff way more often than I it's, want to. You know, it, I feel accent. like I was like, if I wanted that, well, I would no just get an Android. Button, so. yeah. 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 What? That was, their, that was their early answer to no back button. Right. Yeah. It's right. usually the exit the flipboard uh, article that I was reading prematurely. That's the that's exactly. the side swipe. <laughs> <I don't> want, <laughs> like, stop it. Like, ah! I don't want it. I'm now I'm, I'm I was on page eight. Now I'm on page one again. Mm, I hate it when that happens. That is one negative of touch. Touch has to be um, smart. It can't. For instance, oh, you, you know, palm rejection it. has to be good on a screen this big. If I'm drawing, I can't. I don't want my palm to leave a smudge. I forget yeah. if it's Blogger or one There's, of the sites. If you scroll even a slightly off perfect vertical, it goes to a different article. Uh, like you're just trying to scroll an article. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. Battery you, replacements for healthy. some small number of iPhone 6s. Hey, I went. For, I went on that one. So you have to. Uh, so you had. I, so they were. They were reporting. They oh. were. They were shutting down prematurely, reporting that they'd run out of. Uh, yeah. Juice. Forty percent. Forty percent. Anytime my. Anytime my iPhone 6 gets below forty percent, it could go at any minute. Like and so I. I uh, and I was been trying to get time to take it into the Apple Store and have someone look at it, and I confirmed with that article that I have. QC or whatever yeah, it's is QC. This. in the fourth <laughs> in the past they've had a, a, a serial number checker on the Apple site maybe they still do but here's how you could check in the fourth or fifth and fifth position of your iPhone serial number if you have Q3 through Q9 or QC D F G H J and I have QC you have QC and it's so basically you're working away and it yesterday I got all the way down to two but all over the weekend I'd be like working away and I get to 40 percent and then it was just, it would just turn off just it just literally just you know and I thought like I I quit all my apps trying to like is it just something like Skype suddenly hitting it and it just suddenly you know decides it has less than it had or I don't really know what the deal is but it and it doesn't do it every single time but generally uh, I'm it has made me very good at 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 charging it because uh, I'm terrified of getting below fifty percent uh, in action now I and I have a second. Yeah, Normally, you would assume so. that it was just software that the soft that the yeah. software that I figured thought that out what was happening is, is it's not using very much data, and suddenly I'm using something that like uh, a like video or or something, but it wasn't really happening that way. I'll be talking on the phone and suddenly just turn off. So well, it's, apparently, it's the battery because according to this uh, nine to five Mac article, Apple store staff will replace if you when you bring it in, they do this for yeah. free. Will replace the battery with spare parts with, when available, but otherwise will send out for battery replacement stock or sometimes. <laughs> Replace the entire device. I would love if they replace the entire device. Like a little nick on one side of it that would be great. Wouldn't well, that be <laughs> nice? Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one Apple store we spoke with says 9 to 5 Mac had as many as 60 battery parts ordered for customers waiting for repairs. So this is a... Renee, do you know how many phones this is that are, that are in these serial numbers? Is that a lot? No, I haven't seen any estimate. I mean, it always says it affects a tiny percentage of users, but when you're dealing with 100 million right. could you be, know, devices, could be a million. however many, tens of millions. Yeah, right. absolutely. Uh, this is a two-year-old. Not uh, no, I'm sorry. This is the one-year-old iPhone yeah. 6s. All I can say is at the least they're not catching on fire. The touch disease and yeah, yeah, it's touch they disease. They've acknowledged, but they said it's your fault. You must have dropped it. So we'll fix it, but we'll fix it for half the cost it's going to cost oh, us. Yeah, no, I just wanted to, because some people are getting confused as to which device has which problem. So it's right. the 6 Plus that has the touch disease and the 6s that has the battery <laughs> disease. And the, and, six, and, and the best part is, is I have both. Oh, Those aren't the you lucky? Ones uh, I have. And and uh, I have dropped my six uh, plus um, once, and uh, and so, uh, so I guess I fit into that. But yeah, it it just suddenly goes and does funky things, and and then my other one dies. So I'm I'm kind of in you know Apple hell at the moment. So hopefully I'll get out of it soon. When you make that many phones, it's inevitable there'll be some with some issues. I think. 
It's really especially when you redesign them. Like so yeah. again, like they don't look like redesigns, but they're often a lot of the stuff is completely redesigned. So you're dealing with Reve over and over and over again. Well, and to be fair, it doesn't blow up or anything. Could be worse. No. It's not catching fire. They're not. They're not <laughs> I mean, every flight that I'm on is like, if you have a, you cannot have a Samsung. You know, you know, on your person. You know, like they. I know. More and more. Yeah. Like it is I like know. it's like now like. You think that you know the Marshall will search all of you as you enter the plane, and I know it's like it's like it's like it's Tommy it, it, Lee it, Jones, and it's awkward. Yeah, having the Note Seven is like is like having like TV or something at this point. Somebody I on mean, Twitter said I should have sixty Note Sevens for my candles on my cake. <laughs> I really, I didn't want that. <laughs> that that, that would have been fun. I didn't want that. Uh, although you could probably get them real cheap right now. <laughs> Don't buy them. Don't buy them. People. Don't. Buy them. Don't buy them. Don't hoard them. Take them back. It's Don't a nice Don't do one. it. You want to talk about, you guys got any, any uh, before we take a break and get your picks of the week, any recommendations for uh, do black, well, I guess this, this is Cyber Monday. No, this is Cy this is nothing. This is, no, this <laughs> is over. supposed to be give, give, give things to people Tuesday or donate coma to two, people coma Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, and shopping coma <laughs> Tuesday. Or, or your, your leftover turkey is going to go bad if you don't find a way to finish it. Tuesday. But oh, I'm making in fact it's on the stove right now as we talk simmering a ham bone with a, <laughs> with a bunch of beans. I'm making red beans and rice, baby. We had a I ham for Thanksgiving. Leo? Can I do a quick cheap plug on along those lines? Yes. So we launched something new. It's still in testing. It's called thrifter.com and it's just oh. it takes all the Black Friday deals and oh. we have a team of people updating it all the time. I'm going to take to my keyboard something I haven't done the whole show. Smarter like deals every day. <laughs> Care Thrifta. I like the name. You can just this is a great this. idea. This is a great it's idea. So you can sign up Kevin for the Mitchell's newsletter. Idea. He wanted to try to figure out how to get millennials to actually buy technology again. So he figured this was a way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is good. So uh, I will go ahead. I will say that uh, 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 Amazon has uh, the. I, we we won't turn this into another episode of the uh, uh, the sous vide podcast <laughs> but my but my, fa my my favorite cooker the anova is uh down from 149 to 129 on amazon uh over the weekend it was down to 99 bucks and you should buy like seven of them so you can sous vide in the bathtub uh for that price but yeah that's the, the that's that it's, it's definitely one of those change your life sort of devices actually, if you don't already and you really one, want if you give one you really want two or three email saying mine was being delayed till after the new year i still haven't received it i ordered that email. dopey thing you told me to get andy a yes. year ago was it the yeah. what's it called? The misfit, the miss mellow, the mellow. Yeah, that's I why I got the email for too. I, I, well, I, I said this. I said it seemed interesting. I didn't it say does. that. You know, well, you, you got to be careful they with must me. Have, they, they must have. They must have found out that like, oh, there is absolutely no way we can keep food chilled for, <laughs> in a reliable way so that it doesn't wind up getting people eating spoiled pork. Oh, so they have they canceled <laughs> it now? I don't. No, no. I'm, oh, I'm saying. I'm saying I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm saying I don't know. What did you uh, get? You got the email, Renee? What did I it got say? E yeah, uh, let me look. Just pull it up. There must, it it I mean, said I, that there, we there, really there, wish we could ship it before Christmas, but we won't. But we won't be able to do it. It now says the shipping early 2017 on the website. Mellow update. Yeah, we're yeah, sad yeah. to say your Mellow won't ship in time for the holidays, but it is for a good reason. Check out the video below for a word from our. <laughs> we CEO. didn't want you to die from pork. Well. <laughs> You know, so I'm already in trouble with Lisa because I, I not only ordered that, but I ordered that crazy $1,500 June oven. And <laughs> and she doesn't Marshall want any so of this happy. stuff in the house. So I'm already mm -hmm. in trouble. I should probably just but, cancel but the, all these. But the validity of the of the Anova sous vide, I was, I'm, I'm, I try, I'm trying something brand new even as we speak. 24-hour bacon. Oh. You sir deserve you? a sainthood immediately. <laughs> yes, I, you've got you take you say take no like more, a, you, say no you, more. You take the bacon because it's, it's still it's still heat sealed in the package when you buy it. So you take the cardboard wrapper off of it, put it right in the in the water uh, from twelve to twenty four hours, just like a just like a, a brisket, and then you simply sear it quickly on one side. The, the, basically, the idea is that. The, the bacon is completely cooked, and now you get to decide how crisp you want it to be. And so if you want it just to be like a brisket, you can have that. If you want to sear off all the fat, you can do that too. So I'm, I'm going for the full 24 hours. So at 9 p.m., I'm going to have a pound of bacon on my hands. So is this the one that – now, this is the uh, the Bluetooth Precision 800-watt version, uh -huh. 129 bucks. And the reason is they have a new one that's Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth and 900 watts. And that's the original 149. Um, I don't know if that's the reason, 
but well, I also I also don't think you're, you're I don't think you're missing out on anything by not getting the Wi-Fi. You know, uh, I I have to admit that I never use the Wi-Fi one. I never use exactly. Wi-Fi for it. I literally just dial in the the temperature and call exactly. it a day. You know, what, why why would you connect it to your phone? You don't need to know that, right? Well, yeah. it's it's, it's, yeah, it's the, blue, you know, the Bluetooth. It's, the Bluetooth is good only in the sense that uh, the uh, new versions of the app that controls it. Uh, whereas I for this for for the bacon, I had to actually look it up. Like, what's the temperature? What's the time? With the new versions of the app and with certain third-party apps, you can just simply say, "What are you cooking? I'm uh, cooking uh, a pork roast. Uh, how about, about how big is it? Uh, about as big as a dog's head. What kind of a dog? Uh, <laughs> beagle. Okay." <laughs> Press now, the start button. Amazon the is selling this with a rubber made container. But you you could just use a pot for that, right? If you had a big enough yep. pot. You can use a pot as long as you can get uh, uh, the as long as you get 4 inches of water in it, into it with the uh with the immersion. Uh it's perfectly fine. I used I used a pot. I, I didn't buy nothing for it. Uh for the first like 3 months I used this the I just used the deep pot I usually uh, cook sauce in. You didn't buy the sous vide kit with the hand pump? No. <laughs> uh, hand the, pump. And it's not my bag, baby. It's not my, it's not my <laughs> sous vide hand pump, darling. Uh, uh, no, it's, it's making it's nice sous vide. Sweet. It's for all day it's bacon. A, it's a little how's your father. <laughs> Part little top of you and me. It's, it's nice to have a vacuum sealer. You don't need it, though. <laughs> you, can, you, can, you can use you can use a Ziploc bag uh, like that's good for uh, you, good for you heat. Can push the air out. You don't really have to have it be a vacuum, right? It's it's called the the immersion technique where you uh, you seal it uh, the, the, by you, dropping you it really in. Good, yeah. Well, yeah. Because you leave one corner of it open, you let like a like giving Achilles immortality uh, <laughs> in, in vulnerability. Wow. That's you dip, a you reference. You dip it by the corner. Wow. There you go. Deep yep. catalog. You dip it in until the the opening <laughs> the water forces out all the air through the bit that's open. Then you seal that last bit, and then it's but as, as just like as Achilles, airtight. you've got this little heel where there's a little bit of air. There you go. Mm -hmm. Which watch out for mistletoe. <laughs> not, yeah, not, I, not good I, for you know. I had mistletoe. I have a, a sealer, but I just use Andy's technique of just dropping it in. And mm -hmm. and the thing to think about when these are on sale is that is that you do want two or three of them because you have you know like really a big party. You've got chicken, you've got meat, you've got vegetables, yep. and they all have to be different temperatures. And so, I did, uh, I did, I, I did my entire uh, Thanksgiving dinner sous vide, and I have a couple of them. So one of them was cooking the turkey uh, at had to be something like 140 something for uh, two or three hours, and then I was using a second one to reheat the the the, the beans, the the potatoes, the, the sides that I'd already cooked the day before, and reheating those to 165, like a good, really, really super, super hot uh, eating temperature. So yeah, you can have two or three things going at the same time. It, it, becomes, it becomes cookies. a deal, man. Sous vide yeah, cookies. Cookies that have been lightly seared on well, the bottom, we just haven't lived. And and, and and I was talking to somebody that works at a at a large hotel yeah, uh, chain. Yes. And and the thing we have to remember is is that they they were like oh well the, like everything you eat at there is sous vide because yeah. they, that's how they maintain right. uh, you know everything being the same is that if you're going to order a steak he said and like every, everything's already all the steaks that we calculate you're going to need that day are already. In the sous vide, cooked for you know whatever we pull them out. We find, otherwise it would take forever to to you know serve people and and so this is a very much a part of production. It just happens to be something that we now as civilians get to play with well, when don't everyone spend else spend all your money on the uh, Inova because there's twenty five dollar and under stocking stuffers on the iMore site. There's Thrifter.com. There's a lot of places and 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 Black Friday and Cyber Monday really are a month long events these we days. Got a, we got a notified by one of the retailers that they were starting Black Friday and it was going to be a two-week event for them. It yeah. It's just amazing. Yeah. Black Fortnite. Yes. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Black Fortnite. Black Fortnite. That sounds horrible. BFN. Yeah. Do you want to see the latest drone video of Apple's uh, campus? We're getting, we're getting close. I finally thought... Uh, we were talking on uh, about the uh, Apple list, the ban list... Uh, on uh, Sunday, because Ian Thompson says the register's been on it. Uh, Larry Magid said he was on it for a while, and I said, you know, that's all. Uh, that's all a conspiracy theory. Apple doesn't have a list, and uh, I can't remember. I think it was Larry who said, no, no, uh, we saw it, <laughs> or no, it was maybe it was Ian, my colleague, uh, saw it, 
And he's and he said, well, can I go? And he said, no, uh, now that you work at the registry. Oh, that's right. It, it was somebody who wasn't at the register, came to the register, and no longer received invites. And he said, well, where's my invite? And they said, well, no, you're on our list. The register's on our list that you can't be invited. But is that real? Because I, I, like, just this year, I didn't Mark think it was went real. to Bloomberg, and he gets invited now. And Christina Warren left Mashable and went to Gizmodo, and now Gizmodo gets invited because she's there. So, Well, I, I all know. I know is I don't get invited, but, but the minute that they have, they announce an event at the new campus, I'm calling and saying, I would very much like to go. Here it is. It's a little premature, but it sure looks good on this 20. Now, this is really going to kill Apple on this 28 inch Windows Surface <laughs> Studio. Playing in I YouTube, which is a Google too. product. Thanks. Playing on a Google product in 4K. I feel like I'm there. The campus is really getting so soon. I mean, there's the this is the, uh, the entrance oh, to the under, to underground auditorium. Still porta potties, so it's not done yet. <laughs> but they're that's just for potties. press. That's for the press. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll be using we'll be using porta potties, won't we? Um, you know, be this really is cool ugly. Is that going to be an Apple logo on the, on the top there? Oh, that'd be so great. I bet it is. That's, good, that's, good, that's for Touch ID. Oh, for when the aliens. It's come. for the drones. It's for just look at all the air conditioning's in. This is the R and D building, which of course is a separate building, so that. Johnny Ive doesn't have to be bothered by... Johnny Sarucci. Johnny Sarucci. Johnny Sarucci. Different Johnny. Oh, R&D is Sarucci. They've got high They've got high availability Johnnies. <laughs> the other R&D building is rising over on Tan Tan Avenue. That's Tan Tau, but I like to think of it as... And completed maintenance shed. Nice. The maintenance shed's finished. It's kind of dwarfed by this. Look at the solar panels. These are the main parking structures. Massive solar panels. Hundreds and hundreds. 20,000 cars. But somebody's just got to do the math on these. I mean, it is that is that is a lot of capacity. That's many, many thousands <laughs> of kilowatt on hours. Those, Andy. Yeah, there you go. That'll keep your <laughs> sous vide going. Here's the tunnel that you go in. So you go into the underground garage. No traffic. He's done it. These are all uh, these are all drone, uh, 4K drone shots now. And they're really doing a great job. There's two guys who do this. I'm not sure which one this is. They haven't shot down the drones yet. No, I think it's clear Apple welcomes this this kind of they don't want to do it themselves, but they're they're okay with them doing it. Or this. they asked and Cupertino said you cannot have anti aircraft weapons. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. What is this black foam here? That's just for Can we EMP pulse? Them? I think that's yeah, that's a way to structure it so it doesn't uh security that's erode. what you drive through when you go in there. A hundred thousand square foot fitness center. Wow. Employees only. There's the mound of dirt slowly sinking. This is really starting to look like it's a building. Roof of the main ring is now fully covered with solar panels. And Donnie has been building it by himself. So would you please cut the man? Yes. In slack? He's busy. I mean, that he's entire building has to be milled out of a single block of aluminum. <laughs> it takes <laughs> time. Christmas lights, it takes you all day. He's got to build this whole thing. They're putting in the, the irrigation pipes for the landscaping. So that means they're getting very close now. This is going to be gorgeous. What do you think? This is this is the iPad and I, iPad announcement in the in the spring. You think, or it'll be iPhone eight for sure. Ready. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they they look like they're really getting close now. Main atrium. I mean, you have to do the uh, you know the inside. I think Andy said you know it's always possibly they could they could get the uh, press area ready before the rest of it is. I would cool. imagine that as soon as this is close, they would want to have an event there to show it to the press, right? That's yeah. going to be a fountain. Look at that giant fountain. Outdoor cafes. Oh, it's press fountain. It's the press fountain. Wow. Oh, man. A little early for uh, the December drone update for the Apple campus. All right, let's take a... Anything else we want to say before we take a break and get your picks of the week in here? Mm, eh, I think we covered That's everything. Great. More betas, uh, but there's always more betas these days. Good yeah. deal on the ultra fine five G display, five K display from LG. I, you know, I don't know if you can find it. It was briefly for sale, and oh, it was is gone that what again. Happened? It might have been yeah. a mistake, yeah, because it said December originally. Okay. It's not quite December yet. I'm pretty happy with this. <laughs> this is a very it's missing high. a K. It doesn't. Yeah, they don't say four or five K, but it's what was the resolution? And is it P three? Some, I mean, just, I don't know if it's P P three. Can your eyes take non P three anymore? Right. Can take sRGB. Look at the like size of that owl, man. That is a beautiful uh, owl here. Display settings. It is uh, forty five hundred by three thousand. How many megapixels is that? 
all of them. <laughs> 40, it's pretty. 4,500 by 3,000. It's, it's, it's three by two, which is kind of cool. Yeah, original iPhone. Yeah. Yeah. That's a way to make me feel better. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, uh, your picks of the week, gentlemen. So start your uh, engines, prepare your picks of the week. But meanwhile, I want to talk about Drobo. I, as I mentioned, I have been very happy. I have a Drobo for my photography. I keep all my photos on there. Actually, I use it with my iMac because it's Thunderbolt. Plus, I put the uh, little, you could put a little card in there that really speeds it up with small file uh, uh, writes. Um, so that's my, actually, my, uh, my user account is separate from the iMac uh, on the Drobo. And I have six terabytes, I think, which is pretty nice. And then I have the Drobo 5N, the network Drobo. That thing's massive, and I put own cloud on that one, so I'm using that for my backup and syncing everywhere, BitTorrent Sync as well, because Drobo apps, there's all sorts of stuff you can do with it. Uh, it's a family of, Strobo is a family of safe, expandable, but easy-to-use storage arrays. If you or someone you know has more data than you can fit on a single hard drive, you got to go to the Drobo store, and this would be a great holiday gift. Any geek... Any geek would be thrilled to get a Drobo of some kind. The beauty of the Drobo is it's a storage system designed to keep your data safe forever using its Beyond RAID technology that allows you to put multiple drives in. Uh, they offer five, even and uh, five, eight, and even twelve bay hard drives. You can connect via USB three, USB C, Thunderbolt one, Thunderbolt two, or as I do, Gigabit Ethernet. That's how my five N connects. Total could be up to 64 terabyte volumes. 64 terabyte volumes. So great for backup, great for media. Uh, I use it as my primary data drive on my iMac, and I use the 5N, as I said, with OwnCloud for my storage all over. That was the nicest thing about setting up this uh, new computer is I just put the OwnCloud software on there, and I say, get all my data, and it copies it off of my 5N at home, and I'm ready to go. Macs and PCs can share it simultaneously. Now, here's the deal. Through the end of the year, Drobo is offering Twit listeners their very best deal of the year. 20% or more, up to $800 off the purchase of a 5N. That's their network-attached system that I've been using. That's this, this one right here. Or the Drobo 5D or 5DT. They're Thunderbolts and USB 3 drive. Uh, or any of the 8-bay or 12-bay unit network systems. The funny thing happens when you have a Drobo. You get a thirst for storage. <laughs> I get, keep putting bigger and bigger drives in there. I love it. And for speed, the thing is really fast. To take advantage of this deal, go to the drobostore.com. And when you check out, pick what you want. When you get what you want, use the offer code TWIT20 at checkout to save 20% or more off select systems. Drobostore.com. Use the code TWIT20. But it's only through December 31st. I love it. I love the Drobo. And if I ever run short of room, which I haven't, I, I can just take a, out the smallest drive, put in a new drive of a larger size. It rebuilds itself on the fly. I have it set up with the 5N for using two of the five drives. It's kind of so up to two drives could die at the same time, and I still don't lose any data because that's my big backup device. And I still, as a, still have six or what is it? I think it's eight terabytes on that thing because I have. Anyway, you, you don't need to hear this. <laughs> it's a lot. Dro Drobostore.com. The offer code is TWIT20. Time for our picks of the week. I got to start with Alex Lindsay. You haven't been here in ages. I'm sure you you have pent up picks galore. Uh oh, your mic is, is off, though. There you go. Turn it back on. Is it on? Yeah, now it is. It's on? Yep. Oh, I don't know what happened there. So, uh, so I, uh, this is a little one, but this, this gets into when we were talking about having the USB-C and, uh, that I picked up when I, uh, first got the little, the new little, uh, Mac, Mac, uh, air. And, um, this is the SanDisk and it's a 32 gigabyte, uh, type C flash drive that also has your kind of standard, uh, USB on the other side. That is so and cool. It is super useful. <laughs> so, so you know, like if you have something like your, you know, like the current, uh, you know, if, if all you have there and you want to hand the client something or you want to pass it on to somebody else. Andy, has, is that, the, is same that thing? the SanDisk or a different one? That's a different one. That's but, the yeah, one Father are, Robert had. Yeah, this yeah. Is, these, these things are great. I've had this for a long time, ever since I got yeah. my uh, Nexus 5X. Yeah, so the key, kind of key to the operation. So if you... Uh, 
if you want to be able to you know get something off your computer and be able to hand it to someone quickly and let them uh, run off with it or put it on one of your older computers, um, that works great. So either one I'm sure works great. I have the SanDisk one, um, and uh, but uh, but I think they're 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 both probably uh, equally equally good. Uh, I, I, again, I got them when I first got the, the laptop that was only one type C connector and I had to be able to find some way to quickly get stuff off of there easily. And that was my choice and it's worked well. Nice. Andy, wh who makes the one you have? Um, Travis, it's, uh, Father Robert had the two. It was another, it was a well-known, another well-known name. I can't remember who it I was. I think it's Kingston, I think. Yeah, I think it was Kingston too. Wow. That's like a 10th of an Alex. <laughs> well, you know, I'll, don't worry. Don't worry. Next time I'll you come up with something better. I'll swing. For, I'll swing for the stands. Al Alex is recommending you buy a thousand of them. Andy, yes, exactly. And the six and Your pick of the week here. Uh, I got I got sort of an odd one, but it's a good one. Um, uh, a friend of mine passed away a couple of weeks. Uh, Sam Williams. Oh, uh, sorry. And uh, oh, he, uh, he, uh, a lot of people would know him better uh, as a member of the Flying Karamazov Brothers. He was oh, one of the founding members. Smerdy uh, Karamazov. He was just an um, amazing guy. Uh, just the, uh, he was exactly the character that he portrayed, like in the Karamazov's uh, stage performances. Just sweet and kind and just so cool so i'm recommending one of his my favorite performances of the karamazov here's, here's a scene of him in the uh, the comedy of errors that they play, portrayed in 1983 he's doing this was a uh, a live from lincoln center production in pbs <laughs> and uh, that's uh, that's sam in the green oh, doing the awesome. doing doing the death scene <laughs> oh that's awesome um this is and this is one of those occasions in which i'm willing to look the other way, I don't think this vi this video has passed into the public domain quite yet because it aired in 1983-84, but it's one of those things where it airs on PBS like for one week and one week only, and then they can never air that again. And it's such a special production. It's a production of the, uh, Shakespeare's The Comedy of Errors. It's not a parody. They do the entire text of The Comedy of Errors, but they they – it's performed by uh, the Karamazov, so there's juggling all kinds of new uh, new vaudeville performers. So they've got uh, they got uh, uh, they've got baton twirlers, they've got acrobats, they've got aerialists, they've oh, got clowns. Nice. It is hysterically funny, high energy, start to finish. Uh, and believe me, anything that I can quote from the Comedy of Errors <laughs> comes from this. Uh, it's available at a couple of sources on YouTube. Uh, the best source is what I've linked to, uh, part one and part two. Uh, I got I, I it's I, I think I think we're doing a service by keeping this alive by keeping the tape circulating. I got a copy of the DVD not from Sam but from a number another member of the cast who had like a master tape of it, and that was one of the most precious DVDs I had in my collection before I was able to uh, turn it into video. But uh, search for anything on the Flying Karamazov Brothers. He was a he had retired from the group about ten or fifteen years ago, but he was still a very active performer uh, in Seattle alongside his uh, his day job. But he was he could be seen in lots of different uh, uh, street festivals and uh, and city festivals. And like I said, the, the more you the more you see about Sam, that's I've spent I spent a lot of time hanging out with him. Uh, and the 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 character you see there, that's that's Sam, just this guy that big teddy bear of a guy where you just can't imagine him being anything but the nicest person in the room, no matter how dark the room could possibly be. And he would put light into the room just by entering it. So very, very sad to hear about that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope that by sharing this link, you'll have an appreciation for just what a, an immense guy, an immense talent that he was. They were jugglers, acrobats, aerialists. New Circus is a good way to describe him. Yeah, um, and I don't know if they started in San Francisco, but we saw them a lot in San Francisco. I, I, uh, I thought they were wonderful. Yeah, yeah, they're still touring. The only uh, Paul Maggot is the only original member of the group wow. that's still uh, in the group. And they, the yeah, others just. What's well, uh, a young man's job? Out. I mean, you're, that's as you can saw yeah. in the video. They're very active. Yeah, and that yeah. and that was Karamazov in their prime. That yeah. was just yeah. great stuff. Wow. All right, Renee Ritchie, your pick of the week. All right, so this is not my pick, but I figured I'd just show how big this is because it arrived this week. Uh, uh, this is the large version of the Apple Book. I can't even get it in frame. <laughs> uh, ginormous. Oh, you got the $300 book. Uh, Serenity picked up the smaller one, and she did a great set of photos and videos that we'll be putting up. But I got the bigger one just because I was silly, and wow, is it big. Yeah. And huge. 
A good and gift for somebody who really likes Apple stuff. A reading yeah, from the Book of Jobs, <laughs> chapter three. <laughs> Versus Mowage. iPhone 3S <laughs> to iPhone 5. Woo, love. And no. yay, the headphone jack did offend thee, and so did the Johnny pluck it out. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, that is just, it's, it is absolutely enormous, and I'll have something up on that next week. Uh, my pick this week is something I didn't think I was going to pick, but Trinity Caldwell did a review of the Apple Watch Series 1 last week, and it made me give it a second look. And then I, I, I heard tell from retail that, they were actually doing really good business with these. A lot of people were super interested really? in them because it's a hundred dollars less than the series two. And although like I tend towards the latest and greatest, there seems to be a lot of people who just, they don't need swim proofing. They don't need GPS. They don't really care about the brighter screen, but they really want an Apple watch. And this is a hundred dollars lower uh, cost of entry. And it seems to just be breaking through the barrier where previously it was eh, it's just a little bit too expensive to 269, you know, and that's for the 38 millimeter. It's a little bit more, I think it's 299 for the, 42 millimeter, where, yeah, we saw a ton of interest in it. And I've heard from retailers that it was a real surprise, sort of a sleeper hit uh, over the Black Friday weekend uh, that a lot of people are picking up um, Apple Watches and a, a surprising number are really considering the Series 1. So if you have an iPhone and you've heard about the fitness features or the notification features, or you want to just control, use Siri and control HomeKit on your watch, uh, you can do it now with, it's got the same processor, it doesn't have the GPS, but it has the same dual core processor, so it's much faster than the original and it's 100 bucks cheaper. And sometimes you can even find them on sales or with gift cards bundled in or with other promo features. So it, it Great holiday gift. Really, again, talking about the people who have everything. If you want that shuttlecraft for the starship that is your iPhone, uh, then the Apple Watch One is a is a really good gift. I really am very happy with the Series Two. I have to say. Um, Me too. Better battery I got life. Mine better features. Oh, nice. It took forever, but I finally you got, got it. Got the Hermes and the uh, Hermes. This one's band. really cool. It's the Deployant, so you can uh, uh, press buttons on the side, and it will just take this. fall apart, huh? Yeah, well, it, oh, it nice. comes apart with a... But it doesn't look like that. It looks like a buckle strap. It yeah. looks like a regular single yeah. single buckle. And people, I say deployment because that's the actual English term, but then snooty French people get really mad at me. So yeah, Hermes deployant. deployant, not deployant. Hermes oui. deployment. Come on. How dare you, you filthy mongrel. Uh -huh. I'm going to recommend a uh, GitHub repository. <laughs> But actually, you don't have to have anything to do with programming or GitHub. Uh, Dr. Duh, I don't know who he is, has made a Mac OS. It's been around for a couple of years now. Mac OS security and privacy guide. But what's nice, he keeps it up to date. Uh, in fact, the last commit to this was four days ago. And it's really just, it's, it's a text description of all of the things one might do to secure a Macintosh computer. Now, you may not want to do all of these. I certainly didn't. But it's good to know all the things you can do, like a firmware password to keep a bad guy who's stolen your Mac from getting into it. Uh, some of this is pretty high-end geekery using the command line. Some of it's very simple. But it's really nice uh, to have it all in one spot. And I'm, you know, I'm not a security guru, but uh, for, I know a little bit about this kind of stuff. And uh, this is all useful things to at least think up about. Think about uh, if you really want to have a secure system. He talks about all the benefits. I mean, you know, everybody will say, well, encrypt your disk with File Vault. But this is more, this is talking a lot more about how to, for instance, manually seed File Vault with a really good random number and things like that. Uh, how to use the firewall? Apple comes with a Mac comes with a wonderful firewall, but how to use it? What third-party firewalls are good for? Like little snitch and hands off and radio silence. So this is a this is really nice. It's you know it's a GitHub page, so the URL is not something I would I would want to tell you, but uh, let me just go back to the home and tell you if you search for Doctor Duh D R D U H. And the Mac OS Security and Privacy Guide, I'm pretty sure you'd be able to find it. And it is, there's a lot here with, uh, with new stuff uh, added all the time. They just uh, added uh, information for the late 2016 Touch Bar Max. So it's that up to date. Um, you know, all sorts of really interesting stuff in here, including programs to do all sorts of things. Like Little Flocker. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to say goodbye to all our family. 
And Ianako, Chicago Sun-Times, great to have you. Great to be here. Happy, happy birthday and many, many Thank more, you. Leo. Everybody should read Andy's stuff and follow him on uh, the Flickr, I-H-N-A-T-K-O. I'm uh, Andy I on Flickr. Andy I on Flickr, that's right. And Nako on Instagram and Twitter. That was that, that's how that's how old my Flickr account is. That that's when I was still hung up. I gotta be Andy I on every single service I can get. <laughs> now Andy it's like... I. <laughs> Renee Ritchie, iMore.com. You can find his great work there, and of course all the iMore podcasts, including Apple Talk, the latest. You must listen. Thank you. Happy birthday, Leo. And I know you're you flying soon. down to see us. I can't wait. Yes, absolutely. Can't wait. We'll have some fun. Uh, Thursday, we're doing a special taping of our uh, Twit year-end special. What we wanted to do, and you guys, I don't want to leave you out. You'll be part of these in years to come. But we want to bring three or four hosts from our different, who never are cross-show in to be part of. Uh, so we've got Denise Howell, Steve Gibson, and Renee Ritchie. And we're going to do a special year-end Twit where we look at the big stories of 2016. And that should be a lot of fun. And I believe there will be, booze will flow. <laughs> and it'll be secure. And it will be. No, secure. no, no. It'll be. It'll be successful. Don't don't taint it by saying we're and was going to be booing. Come on, <laughs> there'll be no booze. <laughs> Thank you. And also Alex Lindsay from the Pixel Core, PixelCore.com at Alex Lindsay, A L E X L I N D S A Y on Twitter. If you want to keep up on what Alex is up to, that's the best way. Follow him on Twitter. He Hi, birthday, Leo. He tweets almost as much as the president elect, <laughs> oh, but, but somewhat more not. coherently. Yes. Yeah, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> I said it before. I'm glad there's a Twitter. It's the it's I, I didn't like Twitter until then. Now I, I'm just glad to know what's going on in the White House. Look at pictures of Justin Trudeau hugging pandas again. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you everybody for joining us. We really appreciate your being here. We do Mac Break Weekly every Tuesday, eleven AM Pacific, two PM Eastern, twenty one hundred UTC. If you'd like to tune in and join us live. Uh, and join us in the chat room at irc.twit.tv. We'd appreciate it. Uh, if you can't, however, hey, fear not. We have on-demand audio and video of every show we do at twit.tv. In this case, twit.tv slash mbw. If you get there quickly, there might be a piece of cake waiting for you there. But if not, you can press the subscribe button at least to make sure that you get each and every episode every single week. Thanks for being here. But now I'm sad to say it's time to get back to work because break time is over. Bye-bye.